What is going on today guys? Welcome back. Yes, we have finally driven the paddle shifters and yes, the truck is absolutely filthy just like everything we drive. Give me a break. First decent night official Greg weather report is that is the first decent night. Getting a little bit crispy out. Perfect time for a wrench work sweatshirt. Shameless plug there. But the first time driving the paddle shifters over here. Short drive from the house to the shop. Uh, words cannot even describe how much fun they are. They truly are. Uh, just the fact, you know what the best thing about them is? Everybody loves to live that big single life under the hood but guess what that is not any fun when you have to slam your foot against the throttle to get this thing to downshift well guess what downshifting made easy so the uh, last video I mentioned that John had figured out a way to make them respond even faster let's take a look at this we're over here on the plus oh wait you got to go to manual mode okay never mind hold on manual mode let's go to manual mode here quick Hold them both down. Okay, first. All right, check out fast. Boom, four, downshift. Boom, one. These things do, it, it's hard to tell on camera. I know there's a couple of people that said that ha had quite a bit of delay. Uh, fourth gear is a hydraulic function. It's not electronic, so fourth going into fourth is gonna be a little bit delayed, but other than that, this thing is super, Oh man, like I said, words can't even, but we're not working on this tonight. We're not working on this tonight. We are gonna pull this in after, but we got the dually in the shop. We got a couple things going on with the dually this evening. Again, guys, shameless plug, Wrenchworks fall launch giveaway still going on. Thank you guys very much to everyone who has ordered. Uh, side note, we did add bigger sizes. A lot of you guys have been asking for some bigger sizes. We did add them online. So if you did not see the Instagram posts, uh, we did add some bigger sizes online for some of you guys. So again, thank you guys very much. Fall launch still going on, wrenchworks.com. Go check it out, giving away air dogs, cash. Additional side note to the pre-order for the Canada stuff. All you guys up north, if you want to get in on some of that Canada stuff, better do that soon because it is ending in a day or two. Anyway, topic of the video tonight laying over here on the table. Let's get right into it. Cat fuel filter on the Cummins from our guys over at Black Market Performance. This takes place of the factory fuel filter underneath the engine on these 13 and up trucks they do have a separate water separator that's underneath the bed we're going to be changing that as well but the fuel filter that i'm talking about is right underneath here right underneath our banks monster ram here so the factory cap and i am not a seasoned fourth gen owner so this is just uh speculation and what i have heard and what this was made for is the factory plastic cap and again, it's pretty hard. It's, it's, it's down there, trust me. We'll get some light on the situation in a little bit, but the factory plastic cap tends to crack, break, seize up. That is uh, only half of the problem. The other issue is that the factory fuel filters, and especially the water separator as well, these things are expensive super expensive especially if you're going to go mopar mopar no car as, uh, as mikey g would say but we do have a factory water separator here but this is a better filter cheaper filter and will not leave you stranded as you are trying to spin off your factory cap they do make some billet cap options but those do have a tendency to leak a little bit so we're going to be installing our cat uh, adapter, our cat filter. Go ahead and change our water separator. Uh, this truck does have about 13,000 miles on it. So I know some people say 10, some people say 15. Uh, if you're Mikey G, let it go even longer than that because he's a slacker, but that's besides the point. Anyway, on top of that, you guys know that we have got our D&J valve cover that we have not installed yet. We had it powder coated, have not installed it. We're gonna go ahead and do that tonight as well. Speaking of our man, Mikey G, if you guys are interested in that D&J valve cover, I have gotten a couple DMs about that. I've tried to link you guys to that stuff. I will put a link, first link down in the description is to our man, Mikey G's uh, website. He has them in stock and the oil cap actually, instead of the D&J, actually has a come and see. So right there, there's the info. If you wanna get a hold of him, he's got them in stock. Again, first link down below if you guys are interested in getting those valve covers. So as I'm rambling on, I forgot about the first thing that I wanted to mention in this video right off the bat uh, Rudy's fall event is next weekend we will be at Rudy's fall event there was a question on last video uh, me Ali Reagan we will be down there we're gonna be racing the 05 so make sure you guys come Uh, make sure you guys come to that. We will be there all weekend. It's going to be a great event. I don't think it's actually going to be the last event because there is another YouTube call out challenge October 20th at Maple Grove Speedway, which we will be at. Anyway, I think that's all the announcements that I have. Um, 
I did forget a Wrenchworks announcement. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not trying to blast you guys with this all episode long. But um, we're getting orders out as fast as we possibly can. Uh, the first day, uh, we got quite a bit of stuff, and we sold out of some stuff sooner than we anticipated. So that is going to delay some certain people, but we are working on it. Uh, we already have the reorder in, waiting for us to come in. So just be patient with you, with us guys. We are working as fast as physically possible to get everybody their stuff ASAP. All right, that's it. That's all the rambling I got for now. We're gonna go and dive in. We're gonna pop off the valve cover. We're gonna go ahead and pop off the fuel filter assembly. I'll let you guys know how to do all that. And that's it. Oh, <laughs> one more thing. Uh, so the center caps on our American forces, sorry for the camera wobble there. Uh, you can see we took out the chrome plates, the little saucer dishes that were behind there a while ago. We actually gave them to Mark a while ago. Mark might be coming by with those. Uh, I'm pretty excited for those because the chrome just kind of, chrome stuck out. Chrome doesn't get you home, boys, just remember that. So anyway, let's go. guys diving into the engine here here is your factory fuel filter underneath the hood you guys can see right behind your intake horn deep down in here a little bit is your factory cartridge style fuel filter there is a connector right down here I know it's kind of hard to try and focus on this stuff there's one down here this is the drain so we'll drain the fuel that's in the bowl currently there's two bolts that are right here and yes is definitely having a hard time. There we go. Maybe focusing a little bit better. Two bolts on there, and then on the back side, yeah, it's not going to be really possible for me to show you the. There's an, one more bolt, so there's three bolts that hold this on here. One on the back side, and then right over there with the blue little plastic end cap on there, there's another sensor that has to be unplugged. So uh, once we get that stuff unplugged and those three bolts, that should come out pretty easily. Uh, disconnect the factory fuel supply line and there should be a factory uh, line that goes to the CP3 from there. We'll get those undone, and we'll move on. Let's maybe see a little bit better angle right there. All right, so factory canister is completely out now. Let me just go over this a little bit now that you can see everything a little bit better. So here's your factory inlet from your uh, water separator, your fuel pump. Uh, that is your in, as you can see the arrow here. So the fuel comes in there, comes down here that is where it goes to your cp3 fitting right here which i have undone from the cp3 this sensor right down here which i started to unscrew is your water and fuel sensor you're going to want to take that out this is a very sensitive sensor only goes in hand tight goes into this adapter like so screws into that like that so the way it changes is your factory fuel comes in normally from a push lock style so they give you this hose end that is going to clip into your push lock style end goes to push lock you're going to want to go to the back side of the filter head right here then from here you have another 90 degree push lock hose they give you another section of short push lock hose barbed fitting right here and this is your new fitting that goes into the cp3 pump so we're going to go ahead bolt this in this does actually bolt into a slightly different location than your factory one does and then also they give you a eighth inch npt if you want to put in a auxiliary uh, fuel pressure gauge which will come in handy where they want you to mount this is a little bit hard to see again you can kind of see one hole right there it's actually right off the side of the cylinder head there's actually two bolts there's one here there's one right over there, so it'll actually sit up just a little bit higher. So really, location-wise, I was actually a little worried like if this was going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt to unscrew, but there is quite a bit of room to kind of unscrew with your hand right down here. So location-wise, it's really not all that bad. We're gonna go ahead and put this thing in, get the uh, fittings done, and uh, we'll move on to the water separator. All right, guys, we are all set, installed, good to go pretty hard to tell so we got the factory uh, supply line up going into the filter comes out here goes to this fitting right here kind of loops down I followed this one uh, power steering well I don't even know if it's power steering let me see where it goes uh, power steering 
box, I don't know, something like. I followed that down, as you can see, kind of right here. Follow that down, zip tied it there, right up into the inlet of the CP3 fitting. I did have to take off this banjo fitting to completely tighten this fitting, otherwise a wrench between the FCA and the banjo right here will not fit. Took off the banjo fitting, as you can see right there, guess what that looks like. That looks like some voided warranty right there, so uh, no, <laughs> that's the least of my worries honestly with this truck, but... <clears throat> uh, I'm losing my voice. I'm actually, I actually think I'm getting sick, guys. But other than that, water and fuel sensor wiring, slightly a little bit tight. Does have a little bit of slack in there, but does work. And we are pretty much done. Everything went together pretty well. Uh, no complaints. There's a cat filter number. Uh, one thing to mention, too, as well. I didn't mention it in the beginning, and I apologize. You don't have to run a cat filter. This will cross over to uh, Fleet Guard, Donaldson, whatever you want. Uh, again, just much, much cheaper than a factory filter, but you do not have to actually run a cat filter. That's just what comes with this kit from the guys at Black Market. So uh, we are going to move on to the water separator. Not really a whole lot to go over with that. We're just going to go ahead and bang that out. Really, the water separator is just kind of, if you ever change a water separator, it is not a cartridge style filter. Come on. It threads in, threads in, and you have to just replace the factory bottom section with the sensor in it down there, plug it back in, spins off, spins on, but it is actually located on these trucks. It's located underneath of the bed. Let's walk over here. It is located, let's see here, right up in there, right up in, oh, there you go. You can see the blue wire. Right there. You can see it right there. Anyway, our man Mark, he's outside hiding, but our man Mark, look at this. Mark! Hey, Mark! Look at this. What's going on? We painted the gloss. We, oh, all right, sorry. I'm having a hard time talking today, Mark. The okay. chrome that comes here, we painted that gloss black. So really, when you stand back and look at it, it, it stands out just a little bit because it's just a different shade of black. We still do need, we need to do something with the lug nut covers. I've, I've gone through two sets. I don't really like them all that well, but let's see on the front wheel here. Oh yeah. Just when you stand back, it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. So matches perfectly. Thank you, Mark. Very nice, I'm glad you're happy. Sorry, <laughs> Mark, I, sorry, I Mark, Mark was doing body work to the saucer dishes and you only saw this little little bit he was doing all kinds of work i'm like mark just I'm, I'm looking for a glorified spray paint job and he went above and beyond we took these things off months ago but you guys didn't know but thank you, you sir Are thank you, you sir I'm, I'm always happy. I'm happy all right quick easy 30 second tutorial on how to change your water separator underneath the bed of your truck disconnect this plug right here spin this off Take this portion of the actual sensor part out when the filter is out of the truck, transfer that to your new filter, spin it on, plug that back in, tighten it up, that's it. Simple as that, 30 seconds, you're done. Time to move on. boys check it out we are all set look at that valve cover simple clean matches just how greg likes it simple and clean so valve cover install is good we got the hose ran down underneath of the truck underneath all the way down here on the valve cover on your factory valve cover you do have two lines that actually vent into the block of the truck what d and j gives you is these little little snubber little things to zip tie off. If you look down underneath here, and I'm not sure how well you're gonna be able to see. So if you look on the side of the block, and I'll try and find it again and just focus in on it. This is actually a King Speed 
block off plate, but these are actually the same for, Mark, what'd you say, Chevy, right? Chevy, yeah. Chevy. Chevy engines have the same fuel pump block off plate that, the, it's the same pattern. They have a nice O-ring cut groove in here. It's actually on the side of these blocks. It's the same pattern as these. It's a fuel pump block off plate will fit on these. That's what your crankcase ventilation that I just showed you actually runs into to vent down inside of your block. Let me try and find this. All right, so this hose right in front of you, here's your factory fuel line. This hose right down here, and you can see it goes right down into the side of your block. There's a two bolt pattern that looks exactly like the block off plate that I just showed you. It's right above your ECM. You can see the top of the ECM right down in there. It's so hard to tell. I'm trying to show you guys. So hard to tell, but it's down there, I promise you. What that does is these two crankcase lines, one's right here, the other one's right here. On a 5.9, only one of them runs into there. On a 6.7, especially these newer ones, it looks like both of them actually Y into that, so there's no crankcase going on the ground. But anyway, we will put that block off plate at a separate time. Sorry to be long-winded about that. With that, guys, we are wrapping up this evening in the shop. If you guys are interested in that black market filter kit that I showed you guys, I will put the link down below in the description. Everything is tucked away for the night. Last thing, if you guys have not already, get entered in the WrenchWorks fall launch giveaway. Don't miss out. Other than that, guys, I will see you guys tomorrow. Hit the like button before you leave. Subscribe if you have not already. I'll see you guys tomorrow. See ya.